Welcome to We Make Change, the tiny house build. Today we're looking at preparation of a trailer fabrication for the galve dipping process. Uh, we're going to be looking at where to drill your drainage holes and your venting holes and also general preparation of uh, the fabrication. To illustrate where to drill the drainage holes and the vent holes I've set up uh, a simple illustrated example uh, and this is using um, one half of our tra the trailer fabrication uh, the more simplistic half so as you can see here this um, the fabrications held up um, using a gantry or a crane system um, and it's temporarily suspended um, generally using uh, wire and then down here we've got the uh, molten zinc um, that's heated up in a large tank and the basic process is that the gantry lowers the fabrication slowly down into the molten zinc um, and that covers the fabrication. So in this case we're using rectangular hollow section so when the frame gets uh, lowered into the molten zinc the molten zinc enters the internal surfaces um, of the rectangular hollow section and coats them and this is the beauty of this process it coats inside as well as outside and of course you can see that this the frame here is entering the bath on an angle this is so that the zinc has somewhere to run off and exit um, these points we're now looking at a side on view of the tank and the fabrication you can see that the fabrication enters the bath on an angle so that the zinc um, can run freely out of these open sections here so now we're looking um, front on if you like so as well as having an angle long ways um, you can see that the trailer is also angled this way um, this is to aid the finish so that the zinc will run off like this lowest point so we're now looking at a close-up of the corner section so this RHS section is welded onto this section over here and of course the zinc's got no way to enter this section because it's a closed section uh, so what we do is drill um, in our case we drilled around a 12-13mm hole for the zinc to enter and also for it to uh, flow out so this is located in the lowest point um, because I've just shown you that it, it's angled this way and it's also angled this way so that means we need a hole in this corner preferably as tight as you can get so there's no zinc left over um, in this section so now we're looking at the fabrication from the other side uh, I just want to point out uh, the holes for venting um, so as the molten zinc enters here there, there needs to be an exit point for the steam um, to release out of and if there isn't this point um, the steam will build up and eventually um, implode this whole metal section causing a horrific mess and danger to life so these holes are very very important um, your your galvanizer um, can also recommend um, where to place these holes and how big and they will also check everything that goes through their plant for these reasons but again to give you an idea um, this um, this scaled section is from this corner over here you can see we've got a smaller venting hole um, in our case around six mils up and again the highest possible point because the trailer is angled in two directions so for us that there was the highest point so that's where all the steam vents out of so here's some examples 
on some of our vented venting and draining holes. Uh, in this case, um, to sort of save a bit of time and potentially make welding a bit easier, we just notched out these sections uh, using a grinder. Uh, this saves having to drill um, afterwards, which can be easier if you, especially if you've got uh, space limitations for getting a drill in, for example. Uh, here's an example of a drainage hole after welding uh, using the grinding method. Uh, here's an example from underneath the trailer of a drainage hole that's been drilled with a drill bit. Because of our mistake we made earlier using uh, an oil based anti splatter for the welding process, I just thought it would uh, be good measure to try to remove as much of this as possible just to make sure that the zinc was going to stick. So on the end of a drill I just got a wire brush um, that obviously rotates uh, and that cleaned up all those um, surfaces where we could have applied the anti splatter. Um, it's also important to note at this time um, it's especially not recommended to use uh, felt tip pens, sharpies, crayons, uh, anything of the like. It's not a good idea to doodle all over your stainless uh, mild steel uh, because the zinc uh, tends not to bind to those places and also any uh, oil based um, lubricants or cutting fluids are also uh, not recommended and obviously uh, anti splatter as well. So here we're looking at the top frame of the trailer. Uh, this surface along here and here is where the floor uh, is going to be attached to uh, and we're left with um, a protruding weld um, through these joins. Uh, so it is beneficial to remove these welds so we've got a nice clean uh, flat surface to uh, secure the floor down onto. So here's a look at the same surface uh, after I've ground this weld down. Um, this is just using a grinder and a sanding disc ensuring keeping it flat so we don't gr um, gouge into this material too much. Uh, 